a nice breeze here this morning. Welcome to class uh, chapter D, Mirrors. Now I observed something interesting about the optics course compared to all the other courses in the physics major. Let's take a moment to put the optics course uh, in perspective here and talk about this. You take to start out with a year of physics, introductory physics, calculus based. And then after those two courses, you take three 300 level courses and three 400 level courses, lecture courses. And then you have a 300 level, three hours of laboratory that you need to take. But if you look at these three areas for the 300 level courses. You have modern physics, you have thermal physics and optics. Uh, modern physics covers relativity, Einstein, and introductory quantum mechanics. Then when you get to the senior or upper level, because sometimes you take it as a junior or a senior, but the 400 level courses had like the fourth year status, that would be uh, mechanics, electromagnetic theory, and quantum mechanics. And in some cases, there's two semesters of, of some of those uh, co courses, like ENM, maybe two semesters, and quantum, maybe two semesters. But out of all of these courses, it's the optics course that's somewhat irregular in the math, because today we're doing math that is so simple compared to your usual physics major courses that. I wondered if we should even cover it. In other words, with mirrors, these are very, very basic formulas. And they're uh, sometimes, uh, well, they're taught in high school, if you have high school physics. And here they're taught in the second semester of the physics sequence, introductory sequence. But that sequence, uh, that second course is really electro electricity and magnetism, so they might not really do a, a thorough job with it. So that's one reason to consider uh, doing it uh, in optics uh, here, since it is optics. And also maybe you didn't have physics in high school. But what really convinced me that these things need to be in the course, even though the math is very, very easy compared to like the calculus of variations that we did the first class. I mean, whoa, that's more typical, see, of your of your upper level classes. Uh, in fact, let's take a second to look at this. Uh, thermal physics is partial derivative city. There's partial derivatives everywhere, like calculus all over the place in that course. And if you uh, look at your 400 level courses, that mechanics course, that's heavy stuff. And electromagnetic theory, wow, heavy stuff. And uh, quantum mechanics, like, everything's hard. It's like, wow. So if you look at the optics, we're going to have uh, these uh, basic uh, algebraic equations or using you know, trig and algebra. And we're going to be doing that with the mirrors uh, today. And then next class, uh, lenses, like the same thing. But really it needs to be covered in the optics course because first of all, it's in the course catalog. It says this is a course on geometrical and physical optics. And second, uh, three books that I respect very much historically do it. And that's Jenkins and White, which I studied with many, many years ago. And then Hex book on optics, which I taught from when I came to UNCA many, many years ago and got to meet Heck when we invited him to UNCA to be a guest speaker in one of our physics conferences, American Association of Physics Teachers a chapter of the North Carolina uh, chapter. And then the third is my colleague, Chuck Bennett, who was supposed to teach this course, but he retired in, uh, at the end of the uh, spring 2020 uh, semester and he does it. So that's enough reason for me to do it. And a certain bonus that you get is that I spent many, many years uh, teaching these concepts without math, because when you do the geometrical optics without math, you can, you can do it with rays, drawing ray diagrams. So I did that 
And that's part of what we're, we're supposed to cover. We're supposed to derive the, ra the ray diagram rules for the uh, spherical mirrors uh, today we'll be doing. And you can uh, use uh, sketches uh, to like get these conclusions. If you use graph paper and you're very, very careful, like, wow, you can get like uh, the right answers without even doing the math. So I have some fun uh, lectures from this other course I teach, Physics 101, Light and Visual Phenomena, which is for non-majors. So that's, that's like really, like hardly any math at all, more conceptual. And that's a fun course, and I always uh, regret it in a way that physics majors can enjoy some of this fun, and now you can. Uh, as we do the geometrical optics, we'll be doing stuff that overlaps with that course, so that's some cool stuff. So I hope you uh, enjoy this class. Uh, it's gonna be a change. Uh, the math is gonna you know, drop down to uh, algebra and some trigonometry, and a lot of uh, concepts, uh, conceptual things. Here's a fun question you can ask your family members. If you're in a store trying on some clothes and you want to know how big the mirror has to be to see your full self, uh, that's a good question to ask someone. Like, like if you're five feet, like you ask a question, like how big does the mirror have to be so I can see my entire um, body as I try on a full length, say, outfit. Try that. A little tricky. And then ask yourself the question, if you back up from the mirror, do you see more of yourself? Yes or no? Think about that for a second before you see the answer in this class coming up shortly. It's time to demonstrate two principles of mirrors. Now that mirror has the height that's very close to that plastic tube. And the first principle we're going to illustrate is how much can you see with a mirror that's about that height? Well, I can see here two plastic tubes, watch this, that comes to the button, button down to the bottom. So you're basically seeing two of these tubes while the mirror is only one of those tubes in height. So principle one is that if you want to see something, you need a mirror one half the size. So I can see two plastic tubes here in height, but the mirror is only one plastic tube in height. The second principle is that if I get farther away or close to the mirror, it doesn't matter in terms of how much of my body that you're seeing. See, if I get closer here, that's the same as here. Even farther back, same, same. So doesn't matter how far you're away from the mirror, you're basically seeing the same amount of your body. So the two principles are one, you need a mirror of one half the size of what you want to look at, and two, it doesn't matter how far you are away from the mirror in terms of how much of yourself you're going to see. Well here we are in the fourth chapter, and I was inspired to appreciate science more when my dad at an amusement park pointed the camera to a mirror and took a movie of himself. I was so excited. I went, you know, my brother and I were saying, well, dad, daddy's uh, taking a, a movie of himself in the mirror. And this is uh, awesome. Go ahead and let's check this out. like father, like son. Now, here's how you can do the simple law of reflection and do ray tracing. We call this ray tracing when we draw rays to make conclusions. Say we have someone standing here on a mirror or you're standing right at the edge of a lake and you can then uh, have a reflection of someone across the lake and see you standing up and the reflection underneath. So if the light comes from your head hits the mirror and bounces so that the angles are equal, incidence and reflection, then this eye and brain over here figure this light must have come from down here somewhere. And you can pick any point you want. 
works for every every point and then you have here a reflection and that appears from this observer's point of view to come from there and where they intersect is where the image is so there you have the virtual image light doesn't really go down here there's water down here or you know whatever something else it's not going to have light go underneath uh, that mirror and then if we look at this interesting case uh, here, the physics major is looking at herself in a mirror, and you know how sometimes uh, in the bathroom you can have a little little moisture and a little fog, and the mirror gets a little bit fogged up. So if that's the case, and the student traces her face at the mirror, she will find that it's half the size of her real face. And she could conclude then uh, by similar triangles. If you look at this triangle here, this one here is, you know, the halfway point. So this will be one half of the uh, distance, of the length of the face back there. So this, uh, this is neat to see this diagram that the face is behind the mirror. Now I was challenged one day. I was challenged one. I was challenged one day with my father-in-law who said the image is on the mirror. Now the image is behind the mirror. It's not on the mirror. And I tried this discussion with him. Now, he's not a physics major. That that didn't work, but he, you know, he's a master's degree and he, he's a colonel, he's a pilot, uh, Air Force uh, pilot in World War II, a teacher actually. So he's a smart guy. And I was at the time, you know, getting my degree in physics and I felt like myself a failure that I couldn't explain to him. So he didn't like this. Uh, he, of course, did not like this. He didn't know what rays were, and you, you have to take some time to get accustomed to this. So I was at a loss as to what to do, and finally what I did is I said, Dad, what's that camera you got there? A Canon AE-1, he got that for Christmas from his son, Pat. He was very proud of that camera. And I says, do you trust that camera? He says, oh yeah, it tells you how far things are away. I says, okay, let's go to the mirror. And we'll focus on ourselves, you know, the reflection and see what it says. So we did that. And like we were about like three feet in front of the mirror and he focused it. And according to physics, you know, the it should be uh, six feet behind, uh, you know, from us rather, because it's three feet behind the mirror and we're three feet in front. And when he looked down and saw the six feet, he says, you're right. Just like that. I was, I was taken aback. I didn't think he would agree with me so fast, but he trusted the camera as a scientific instrument. So that was neat. Success. Oh, by the way, when I was uh, visiting the second grade, once I had uh, two students come up to the front of the room and pretend the mirror was there and put the hand, uh, let's say this is the uh, real person and this is the image. When the real person put their hand in the mirror, the image, uh, the other uh, young lady put her hand in the image and they, they did this correctly. When one lady walked toward the mirror, the other one uh, walked toward the mirror. Uh, so that's, I hadn't thought about that until after the discussion of my father-in-law. So uh, this is second grade, like, you know, and, and watch how this, this can work at any age level. I have you stand over here. Uh, that's cool. And now what we're gonna do is pretend, there's like, a, let, let's pretend there's a mirror right here in the middle, all right? And you're gonna like do something in the mirror, maybe you touch your hair or something, all right? And then you're gonna pretend you're the image, all right? So why don't you do something? This is correct, okay? And now why don't you move your hand, why don't you come closer to the mirror? This is good. Why don't you touch the mirror? The, 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 go ahead and touch it and hold it, oh, put it touch it, yeah. You see, you, you see, this is like, you see how she fixed it? Yes, yeah, you see that? You see, isn't that awesome? And now do something with your hand again. See, see, see how she moved back, she moved back? We are proving the. We are proving this result. I wish I knew this with my dad. You know, my father, I, I, I didn't know this trick then, all right? But luckily, he had the camera. But if he didn't have a camera, this would be what to do, all right? So the mirror is here, right? And you instinctively, if you use that hand, this is perfect. And now go ahead and touch the mirror with that hand. So see, perfect, perfect, exactly. You may have noticed in that other video we just saw where when one student picked up the right hand, the image matched it with her left. In other words, there's a left, what, right kind of reversal there. 
if you notice the word ambulance here is backwards uh, like reverse so that when you look in a car in front of it looks in the mirror rear view mirror it will be correct so that's the fascinating property of mirrors my brother den my late brother den would have fun writing things backwards and then you have to look in a have it show in the mirror you know hold it up in the mirror to get the message uh, this is uh, lewis uh, carroll uh, in alice in wonderland uh, does this trick where you see print see backwards like this isn't that cool there's the real alice and my daughter gave me a birthday card where my daughter did this and it must spread in the family because she did this on her own. She's like a teenager and she writes this happy birthday card and like you can't really read it unless you look in the mirror. Now if I, I click on it, I have the, the mirrored version and then you can read it. Say happy birthday, little notes down there, la la. Very nice, very nice. So we have uh, the slant, this is slanted, this is slanted mirror physics. So if you have the slant, it tastes like this. Then the light from that little circle would hit here and then go to the eye, and then you would conclude that it's back here. I want to show you a cool example of this from an application from 1980 where they had this uh, had this pregnancy test kit that worked on this principle. You would take a urine sample and then mix it with a chemical. We have cleaned this out. All the chemicals have been washed away. All right? And then if you uh, had a little <coughs> ring on the bottom, that meant you were pregnant. Uh, but if you disturbed it, uh, you mess up the experiment. So what they did is they had the mirror there and put the test tube there and then wait and then look and see if there's a little ring uh, there. So uh, you'd mix it and, and put it there and leave it alone and, and then go look in a few, few minutes, all right? And then uh, either bad news or good news, depending on the circumstances, all right? You would know your answer. So this is cool. Uh, uh, I'm passing that around. That's the test tube. Uh, all the chemicals have been thoroughly washed away. It's clean, all right? All right, this is, uh, this is the experiment here to show that you can see the, the test tube. You can see the bottom of the test tube easily on the mantle without having to, you know, hold the test up and jiggle it and mess up the experiment, right? Now, when I was born, uh, the doctor would tell my mom early on that she was pregnant or something, you know. But now, when my wife went to the doctors, uh, he asked her, uh, did you do the pregnancy test? And he, she said, yes, I did. How did it turn out? She said, says, I'm pregnant. He says, then you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing how the generation, you know, currently now you go to the drugstore and find something, you know, and get something that's powerful enough to... In one in one time that wasn't the case. You know, you have to rely more on the doctor or something expecting you. Early on, eventually you're going to know if you're pregnant, of course. All right. So that is cool. Uh, and we got that pregnancy test kit. Here's another cute variation of the same thing. There's a slanted mirror in there and a cute little tiger. And if you have a flashlight, then you know it would kind of it would kind of light up and, and like bounce the light out and blue. So you can spin that around, touch that with a little mirror down there. So there'd be a flashlight would come up there, you know, the light would come out, you know, like go, go around. Yeah. Yeah, we could buy a new one of those with a flashlight and all. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Then we have the uh, Darth Vader and Yoda. When you have this slanted mirror, what you can do is uh, this, this little trick there, what they did with the slanted mirror, if you put like a part of a face there, you'll get the reflection of the face, right? But check this out. They have it so they got Yoda reflected on one side, half of Yoda, and then half of Darth Vader. But when you look at it, like because of reflection, like you see a complete Yoda and a complete Darth Vader, like pretty damn, yeah, that's cool. See that? There's like one slanted mirror with half of the face on each side. You know? Yeah. Yoda looks cute. Darth Vader looks a little scary. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just like turn it left to right. That's kind of neat. Okay, so now we're going to look at uh, here the concave mirror, and we're going to do the formula for concave mirror. 
So what do we have here? Let's look at, we have this diagram. We're gonna stare at this diagram for a while and then we'll go to the uh, drilling board and we'll do uh, the derivation of the formula. Well, here's the concave mirror and that's a concave, it caves in. So when you come in the light from the left, that's called the concave side. Uh, this rear surface, uh, if light were to come from the other side, that's called a convex surface. So just think of the concave one caves, caves in. So you have here O, which is the center of the mirror. You have point C, which is the center of curvature. That means if you took this uh, curve and like made a circle, you you would have C as the center the center of the circle. And the radius is the distance from the center of the circle to the mirror. So that's the radius R. The optic axis is the horizontal axis here that goes through the center of the mirror, a reference axis. Object, this is the uh, object. We just make an arrow standing up there, height H naught, H is zero, H for object. And here the image, there's your image, and we'll, we'll, we'll look at the formation of that image in a second, just the definition of things, image. And then you have the distance uh, to the object, that's S O, and then the distance to the, uh, to the mirror to the image is S, S I, and then your heights are H O and H I. Okay, so how does this work? Why, why do we get this effect? Well, uh, one ray that goes to the center of the mirror, you know, the center, meaning the center, meaning the center of the circle, that if you drew the mirror all the way around, that would be the center. But the main thing here is that since anything from the center of that circle that hits the mirror is a normal. So that means light coming through C is along the normal, which means the angle of incidence is zero, which means it bounces right back. So the reflected angle is zero. So that's along the normal. So that's one ray. And then the other ray is going to be the one that hits the center of the mirror. So the angle of incident equals the angle of reflection and then where these rays cross is where the image tip is feet on the ground feet on the ground so I simply draw from the feet on the ground to the head and that's an upside down image it's a real image because light really goes there and we want to understand uh, a formula that goes with this picture so what we're going to do uh, we're going to uh, well let's let's look at a couple things here First of all, the tangent of phi is going to be h o over this big distance s o minus r. So the tangent of phi is this height over this run. So that's h o over the s o minus the r. So I'm going to put that down here. So that's the tangent of that phi. Now, the tangent of phi is also equal to this height of the image, hi, divided by this little piece. Well, that little piece is the r minus si. So hi over the r minus si, that's the other one. So that's one equation before we go to the drawing board to work out the derivation. And then the other equation I need is this one here. The tangent of theta is h o divided by this long line s o. And the tangent of theta is also here h i divided by this line, SI. Oh, this is easy. This is an easy one. So it's basically HO over SO and HI over SI. And that's what this, that's what this one is here. So with these two equations, we will now go to the drawing board or the blackboard, so to speak, and work out the derivation of the formula. Before we start, let me just point out that you probably learned, maybe it was in high school, where the parabola is what you need to have parallel light come in and come to a, a focus, a point. 
And we're using spherical mirrors, spherical cuts, because they're easy to manufacture. Now, if you look at the conic sections, you have yourself a, a circle, you have you know, the ellipse, and then you have the parabola that opens up, and then you have the hyperbola. Now, all of these are gonna be pretty much it's the same when you look at a small region near the axis. So the understanding of this material, it's implied that we're looking at close to the axis so that we can approximate the parabola with the circle or the spherical cut. And in some books where they draw these things out, to make sure the student can see that it's a convex or a concave. This is concave on the, coming in from the left. What they'll do when they do their ray diagrams, they'll just have a vertical line here. You know, since you basically want this to be uh, a gentle curvature near the axis, so they'll just use this dotted line when the ray's coming in, they'll just have it hit, hit here and then go to F like that. All right, that being said, where we left off uh, with the, the math last time, we had the tangent of phi is equal to the height of the object, and this is then the object distance, S sub zero, minus the radius of curvature is H I, that would be your image height, and radius minus the image uh, distance and at the tangent of theta h object over distance object is from the mirror ratio with the image now we really don't care about the angle we, we care about this equation and that equation that's what we want to deal with so the angle was a way to help us arrive at these equations so this one here we can write as R minus SI over, you know, bringing this R minus SI over to the uh, left over S object minus R. And that would be bring the H O to the right. You have this equation and similar thing here. I want to get set up where I have the SI on the left over the S O and then that's equal to the H I over the H O. And then I can set these two equal. That's, that's the idea in this derivation. So by doing that, we can uh, write down uh, R minus S I and hit that with the S O and then if we bring this over to the SI, we'll have this nice relationship. So we're basically setting these two equal and then bringing the SO up to the numerator in the left. And then we're bringing the denominator on the right over to the right hand side. Then we're gonna work this out as O, R, minus S, O, S, I, S, I'm going to write the, uh, the S, O first here. This is the same, it's product, minus S, I, R. And then uh, the next step will be to notice that this can be brought on one side of the equation I'm going to bring this over to the left and bring that to the right. So I have S O R plus S I R and then bringing this to the right, there'll be two of them. And then the next step I'm going to do is divide by R. So I have S O plus S I is two over R. So SI. And then to get the standard form of the equation, we divide by the product. 
SOSI. And this becomes one over, well, let's go ahead and, well, we can just go ahead and write it out. Let's just do this that. Now this is going to, you know, be here one over SI. And here the SIs will cancel one over SO. And it's standard to, to write the object one first. So one over SO plus one over SI is two over R. Now this equation here, you know, if we look at, you know, the setup we had before we had the center of a curvature and we had here, and well, we're gonna look at, we're gonna look at what this point, this point in here, you know, the center of curvature is gonna get you R. And what this is telling me, the mathematics is telling me here that there's something special about the distance R over two. Uh, that's halfway point, I'm gonna call that capital F. And that's gonna be by definition, the focal length. Okay. And I'm gonna write down one over SO plus one over SI is one over F. Now, the reason why we call that the focal length is if you had the light coming from infinity where like the object is very, very far away, then this is zero, this goes away, you know, one, you know, one over that goes away, one over infinity. And then the image is at, at the focal point. So it's like, that's where it is. So that's kind of neat. So like if you had light coming in like this, and you're probably aware of this, where you look at satellite dishes and you have that point there, the focus. Now remember, technically you need to have a parabola. You, you need to have a parabola. So this is a sphere, a spherical mirror, because it's easier to, to grind these out, cheaper, and if you're not away from the axis, it's going to be fine. See, so you uh, you get some distortion. We call those aberrations. You know, when you get farther away, but this is very powerful uh, physics to and to have this spherical mirror and have this formula go with it. So the next equation here, if we look at this. SI over SO, that's the magnification because you're comparing the image with the object. And we put a minus sign in front because for the uh, classic example that we did here, for example, if we have, uh, here we have the C and here we have the F. And actually you can, you can now uh, use a ray track. You know that parallel light's gonna go through F, so we could then do this. And then if you go through C, you bounce right back. So you get a cute little upside down image there. And if you take, you know, this is your SI and your SO is over here. So if you take the, that ratio, and since it's upside down, we put a minus sign. So the minus sign reminds us that's upside, we have it upside down. Uh, later, we'll look at a case where we do a problem for the makeup mirror uh, when you're very, very close, uh, let's say if you have C and you have F here, if you're back in here, it, way close, you're gonna find that the uh, image is on the right side behind the mirror and it's gonna come out with a negative sign. That's gonna be cool because that's gonna mean behind the mirror. And then uh, it's gonna be upright and then the negative signs will cancel. So very, very nice result, very nice result. And these two equations. Here's a beautiful picture of a concave radio dish at Rosman, North Carolina. Amazing, look at that. Nice uh, concave dish and radio waves come from uh, the sky, from, uh, from outer space, and they then get focused to the uh, focal uh, point here. And there's a detector there. That's neat, beautiful Western North Carolina. So here is a, a diagram uh, using the, the fact that when you have a ray of light that's parallel, that's going to go through the focal point. So we have these rays. We can have these rays uh, to use for analysis. Ray one is 
a ray that's parallel to the axis, that's going to go through F. And then ray 2, the central ray, that goes through C and bounces right back. And then ray 3 is ray 1 backwards. If you were to go through F, you would go out uh, along in a parallel line here. So you can always take a light ray and like, and like switch it and have it go back the other way. So with these three rays, you can then uh, sketch, and this is what I do in my uh, class for non-science majors, where we don't use the formula, we use these ray rules to get the uh, result. So that's a real image, it's inverted, and it's smaller, and it's between C and F. Very, very nice. One of these, but I want you to think of this, just when you do your rules, just go ahead and use like this straight line there like that because these are supposed to be thin thin mirrors all right well, hold that there for me this is part of the given all right to give you this this is part of the given okay? and then we'll turn you loose after we give the given all right so we got that and then here probably should measure this to make sure i i got the twice distance thing so if i go here with the 70 to 50, like 20 centimeters, then go from 50 to 30. This helps me give the given more precisely. So we got this, we got that, all right? And that's the C, this is the C, and this here is the F. And we're gonna put something fairly far away, so let's put it like, like there, all right? Looks like, Zach, you're gonna be the chalk person since Destiny's got uh, off her to switch. Look at that. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to use uh, this straight kind of line as the reference, and that's I put the little notch on the top and the bottom so you can see it's like concave. All right. So make a ray from the top of the arrow to the mirror. Yeah, and this is where you have to like try to make it so it's like parallel so it doesn't slope up or down. Go up a little more. Yeah, that's good. Clashes look better from you. Uh, you can see it better back there than we can. What do they need to do? That's fine. That's fine? <laughs> All right. They say you're good. All right. Go for it. Because if you're off, if you're off, then what'll happen is that the rays will start doing weird things. Yeah, if you want to apply apply the rules. All right? All right. And we have a smaller ruler here you can use. You can switch. You can switch. And that one's going to go through F, right? And that looks pretty good. Yeah. And you keep going because we don't know how, how we, we don't know what, what we need. Yeah, it's good. And then give me a little arrow. Zach's giving the arrow now. Good. That's good. That's cool. Now, the next ray, it'll go through C and bounce right back. And that's all you need. You're going to be finished because they're going to intersect. There they go. Destiny shows good technique there. Look at that. All right. And there's Zach bracing the... Uh, that nice and smooth, very smooth, right through the center, perfect. And give us a little arrow, yeah, and a little arrow shot, yeah, fantastic. And I'll do the rest, thank you. This is excellent, beautiful job, beautiful job. So, this is uh, ray one, and this is ray two. And notice, class, uh, where they intersect is the head is upside down, cute little upside down. Uh, Remember, feet on the ground, feet on the optic axis, feet on the ground, and there's the head. And see, here is the location. And to show you a demonstration of that, this is a telescope mode where you look at something far away. See if you can see things upside down that are far away in here. Do you see, like, the class upside down, some chairs upside down? Is there anybody here? Do you see something upside down? And when it's close to your face, surprise, it's a different effect. That's the, that's the makeup here. I'll do that in a second. All right. Everybody see that? Everybody see, like, things upside down? That's cool. Upside down. Nice. Very nice. Now, you don't need that third ray, but that third ray would be uh, here. You would aim at F. You don't need this one. But if you aim at F like this, I'm going to do it anyway, just to show you overkill here. If you aim at F, like that, then this will come back parallel, and the parallel one will 
also go through there, so like that. So that works too. So there's three. But when you do your homework, just do two. Don't do three. All right. Two is good. All right. So then we come down to communicate it. Uh, we want to say it's a real image because the light really goes there. Light really goes there. No dotted lines. And it's inverted. And it's smaller. All right. Inverted and smaller. A real image. So you have a mathematical way of doing this and a graphical way. And the third way is you could actually like do the experiment. And here I did the experiment and took a picture of myself with one of these mirrors. And I am, I am basically uh, what six feet tall. So here in the mirror, this is like reduced. This is, and it's upside down. So it's like, comes out really nice. Uh, concave mirror but if you get really close to a concave mirror then wow what is this the concave mirror acts like a makeup mirror like where you see like detail so that is cool a very very rich mirror that has lots of uh, different uh, let's say images depending on where you are standing relative to the mirror so here's the diagram for the big face effect if you're standing close to the mirror one ray is parallel and goes through F. Now, the ray that goes through C, you really can't really go through C because the C is to the left, but what you do is you get your ruler and line up your ruler with C, and then that ray that would shoot up to the mirror along that radius and then bounce right back and go through C. So that's how you can get the use of the ray, the central ray. And then here, these two eyeballs, uh, they conclude that the image is behind the mirror because these two rays appear to come from back there. Now, always use dotted lines when you're behind the mirror. Light doesn't really go there. So when you see a solid light, that means like that's, that's going to be light. light. Light traveling hits the mirror and goes through Z. Light hits the mirror parallel and then goes through F. But these are rays that are used to help find where that image is. And that's a virtual image, and it's upright, and it's behind the mirror, and it's larger magnified the makeup mirror here i am at the geogebra site geogebra.org a nice site with a lot of apps now i'm going to type in mirror and if i type in mirror i see that i have concave convex and the one I like is this one here, Tom Walsh. Yeah, this is a cool one. So what we're looking at with this, with this app here, I'm going to make the focus a little bit closer to the, to the mirror. And I can march in from far away. See, if I'm far away, the image is going to be almost at the focal point. If I get really far away, it'll be at the focal point. It'll be like, it goes like the zero size. It, and here it then grows up as I march in. And when I get to see, something special happens, same size. And then here it gets, it's bigger. So the image is over here on the left. And then if I get to the focal point or the focus, it's like now like they're parallel rays. It's like infinitely large to the left upside down, but then infinitely upright and large to the right as if the two infinities meet and something transforms to now see the virtual image, see? So this is the makeup mirror mode when you're inside here. And then when you touch the mirror, it, it's going to be the same size. So he has the main vertical line here in the middle as like the mirror. We talked about that before, how they use that line. So if I get to that line, see, it's the, it's the same size. So this has all the cases. All the cases. And there's a table in your book that, that divides up into regions here and, and does this.
the concave mirror has lots of surprises, as you have seen. Let's see what happens when my face is close to the concave mirror. We see a magnification. And there gets to be a point where things will appear to be inverted if the objects are very far away. And we can we can do mathematics for, for these, which we're basically doing here. I will let you read this in the book where you, you basically plug in the numbers. I give you some numbers and you plug them in and crank it out. And you can then use the formulas. And we'll look at some of those, you know, for homework. So you have the math that you can look that over. Uh, this is neat. This is a graph paper drawing. Uh, but there's also a program here uh, that this uh, came from. And this... Uh, shows you how you can really do some nice uh, work and I, I would like you to uh, do one of these for homework where you do a nice uh, engineering kind of diagram that's very beautiful uh, to lay out lay out an object in an image uh, formation so you'll be doing that uh, here you should look at this over in your book this is a nice powerful table that is basically showing you where all the cases are and you should study this table, study this book uh, in, in your chapter. And this is showing you that where if you're out here and you were to sketch the rays or you know use the formula, your image would be in region two and it tells you it's gonna be smaller and inverted. So I, I like you to study this table and to understand all possible cases. So if an arrow is marching, marching in like this, you can see all the cases that are outlined in this table uh, for you. It's very nice. And then the convex mirror is the mess, uh, the Escher. Here's the Escher, a reflecting globe, or a reflecting hand with reflecting sphere. And these are fun. Here's some with uh, my daughter. There's me in the back, and that's Wendy Newman, the photographer there, that's taken the picture, a professional photographer in Asheville area. And she helps set these up, uh, the composition. Uh, isn't that neat? Uh, and these are smaller, you know, in other words, the images are smaller uh, with the convex case, just like you see here with the Escher. If you touch the mirror, then it's the same size. Uh, but then it's smaller as you back away. So that's nice. Uh, here we're going to stare at this diagram and then go to the drawing board and work out the formula for the convex case. So here we have a similar setup. We have an object. And we're going to take the ray that's going to be aimed at the center of curvature uh, here on the other side because that would be along the radius and that bounces right back. And then you have the ray that hits the center so the angles are equal. And when you extend that backwards, uh, you then find where the image is. So you, you can imagine an eyeball here, you know, watching where this is coming from and an eye over here seeing this ray coming back. And it appears to come from this point here. Uh, so you put the feet on the ground, feet on the ground, and just go up to that point, the top point. And here, uh, we need to have some equations that we can work with. Uh, the first one's going to be working with, let's say, alpha. The tangent of alpha is going to be hi over this piece, and this piece is r minus si. So hi and r minus si, that's going to take care of uh, the first a relation we need and then if we look at here the tangent of alpha in terms of this big triangle we're going to have h o over s o plus the r and that's what we have here h o over s o plus the r and then the other one that we did earlier for the tangent of theta that's very easy that's going to be h i over s i and it's also going to be HO over SO. Uh, notice that these two angles are equal because the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. And this angle back here is equal because when you have two lines that cross, those opposite angles are equal. All right, so a quick review of these again. Uh, the tangent of alpha 
is going to be here, we'll go with the big triangle first, the HO over SO plus R. All right, that's this one here. And then the tangent of alpha for the small triangle would be HI over this little piece here, which is R minus SI. So for the, uh, the other equation, you have the HO over the SO, that's the tangent of theta, and then the tangent of theta here is HI over SI. So there you have it, HI over HO, SI over SO. And now we go to the drawing board to, draw, to uh, write out the equations to do the derivation. So now if we consider the convex case, where light's coming in here, convex, uh, the equations that we had from studying the figure uh, were kind of similar. We had HO over SO plus R, I got a plus sign before we had a minus sign. And then here, HI over R minus SI, and that looks like the same on that side. And then we have the similar equation, same equation uh, on the ratios. We had the HO over the SO is the HI over the SI. So doing the same thing to get here, we're looking for HI over HO in two forms. Uh, over here, you would have R minus SI over SO plus R. And then from this one, uh, you would have the SI over the SO. And the similar steps, we would then multiply, you know, basically cross multiply here. So SO R minus SI is SI S O plus R, and then multiplying it out, S O R minus S O S I equals S I S O plus S I R. And then see these two are gonna be combined. We'll, we'll do the same thing we did before, get that a one side equation. So this is gonna be, we're gonna subtract the S I R, and then bringing this over there, it'll be two of them. Then we divide by the R, like we did before, and we get uh, here two over R. And then we're gonna divide by the SOSI product, as we did before. Then this is gonna give us one over SI, because the SOs will cancel, minus, and then the SIs cancel, like this. And then since we like to have the SO first, we'll multiply through by minus one. Now, this is very, very fascinating because when we had the, you know, the diagram, but we were analyzing it, we see that the uh, image is behind the mirror. So, you know, using our convention that this should be less than one. In other words, a negative sign, because that's the negative space. That's negative space. This is positive space. This is negative space for the mirror. Then I can write this as one over S with a plus sign. So now if I do the plus sign, now the SI is going to be negative. Because see here, the SI was the absolute magnitude. So I had the minus sign. But now if I do this, it'll be negative. And also, if I make this the, uh, the focal length, that's going to be negative. In other words, the focal length is a negative uh, r over 2 for the convex mirror. Now, this is excellent. I want this because then I have one formula. I have one formula, and if I have concave, f is positive. If I have convex, f is, f is negative. And then here, when you do the magnification formula, the si over s, Oh, since the SI here has become, we have forced it to be negative by convention, then because it's behind the mirror, then the SI is negative, cancel that negative sign, and this will be upright. And see, that's upright. It all fits together. So we remember 
that for a mirror, this is positive space, so your distances are positive if you're on this side. Now, SO is going to always be on that side, so SO will always be positive, but the SI, if it's positive, it's on this side, like here. And if it's negative, it'll be behind the mirror, like that. Then your, you know, your F is going to be positive if it's concave, and if it's convex, your F will be negative. Whatever that you know, radius of curvature is, you just slap a minus sign on. You know, you can divide by two, but then you put a minus sign if it's the convex. And the formula stays the same here. This will this will apply in both cases. So very elegant uh, formulas. Okay, so let's give you a, a problem to start with. We we'll erase uh, erase all of this, and you'll be doing the convex the convex mirror. All right, it's a nice mirror. All right, that's the one that's shaped uh, like this. All right, and we're going to need a big optic axis here. This is part of a given. Part of the given is uh, for me to do this part. You want to hold that, uh, Sean, there, and I'll go ahead and uh, put this in because this is part of a given right, situation. All right, so we got that. We got this. I'm going to go a little bit more on this side here. Right. That's good. So the center here uh, would be somewhere like this. What I recommend you do for homework is to just make this like this. In other words, don't worry about this because all the things I'm showing you really apply to thin mirrors. They gotta be thin. So see how this is, gent I'm making a gentle case here. So just draw a straight line and you do your homework. You know, when you apply the rules, all right? So this is uh, C, this is still part of the given. They put your uh, F in the middle there, all right? And we're going to put, the, let's put the object, uh, let's put the object here. Right. I make the object very simple. It's an arrow. It's like a person standing up. All right. So I guess uh, are you the chalk person, Lillian? Me the chalk person. You're the chalk person. Okay. So the first thing you do uh, is you take the ruler to go from the top parallel. That's ray one, and you make it parallel to the optic axis. So it's parallel, like it's like the same. I, I think it's sloping down a little bit. Make 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 it so that. Yeah, it's like the same, like if this is, see how, how yeah, like, yeah, make it, yeah, exactly, that's good, that's good, right. All right, looks pretty good, make it a little bit more, well, no, yeah, just the, yeah. And then you're going to draw the line, stop, stop there, All right. Okay, William draws the line, good. Then you might need a small ruler for this, get the small one. And now what you do is you line it up. This point gets lined up with the F, and then she's going to do a dotted line here, and like a solid line going going up. All right, that's applying the rule. Okay. So a dotted line there, because the light doesn't really go there. All right, and the light really goes up exactly. And then the last thing to do is somewhere in the middle put a cute little arrow uh, so that you show the direction where the light's going. That's nice. Physicists really like that. They really appreciate. That's very nice. Yeah, and then you do one up there, like the show, and you really like that. In the middle of the race, somewhere is my preference. Yeah, I like that. It's nice. Everybody see that? Yeah. Now, we like to also do this to draw a cute little eye like that. I'm looking at that, isn't that nice? So that means it's going to be back here somewhere, the image. Now, your second ray is you're going to line up to, to aim at C, and that's going to bounce right back. So you're going to stop when you hit the mirror, do dot it on that side, and then you know it's going to come right back. So he goes to the tip and then to the C. All right, this is very good. Yeah, this is good. So there goes Lillian. She's drawing. There she goes. Nice. She stops perfectly. Look at that. So now she goes at the dotted line. Beautiful. Look at that. Beautiful. And then here, you can draw a little ray going this way, and then one indicated when it got reflected back. Very nice. Very nice. Excellent. I will do the rest. All right, this is it. This, these, are the two these are the two rays. And I'll, I'll show you how to analyze. This is good. Very good. So, so we're going to be just drawing pictures today like this. So I'll do a couple more, show some demonstrations. So what you do here is, uh, you see where these lines cross here? 
This is a cute little tiny upside, I mean upright, upright uh, image because uh, that's the head that came from the head. So you feet on the ground, feet on the ground, feet on the ground. So that, that's, where, that's where it is, that's the location. And uh, to reflect on this, uh, I want you to think surveillance, all right? I want you to think surveillance mirror, all right? So for the reflection stage here, all right? This would be a mirror that would be in like a store so that the cashier can see like everybody in the store on what they're doing, you know, keep their eye on stuff, so uh, picking something up. So you, you, see, you see everybody real tiny, real small? I have a bigger version here. This nice one, nice serve valence mirror there. You see, it's small. See, it's like it's like what we're seeing there. Like it more checks out. At the University of Maryland, they had a stage that would rotate, so the professor could set up behind the stage, and they had one of these there. So when you push the button to make this stage go, you, you want to make sure there's no one standing that might get hurt. And sometimes these are on roads, intersections. It's a wide angle, it's a wide angle mirror, so it makes things small, very nice. Very nice. So, uh, this one here is uh, like more like plastic, and you can pass it around the class, so you know, kind of have some fun looking at that. There, pass, pass it around. So, now, you don't need that third ray, but if you were to do the third ray, let me show you the third ray. You don't really need it. In fact, I think it's better not to use it because you get too much on the diagram. But let me just show you that if I aimed, if I aimed at F, if I were to aim at F like this, then it would go back parallel, and this eyeball would also agree that that's the top. You don't need the third ray. You just need the two. So here's ray one, ray two, and ray Actually, ray three would be this one starting out here, going this way, and then coming back. So this eyeball thinks it's there, this eyeball thinks it's there, and if you actually had an eyeball there looking at it, it would also, they all agree that's where the tip is. So, so a nice uh, demonstration, nice reflection here, and to finish the full communication, the full communication, you would say this is smaller, this is upright, and since light doesn't really go there, it's virtual, and that completes the steps. I, I love this uh, Escher. Uh, Escher here is basically holding like a sphere, like a convex kind of surface kind of thing, and look at that. Notice that when, you, when that is being passed around the class, now I can demonstrate it here with this one very easily. Notice that if you actually touch the mirror, the, hand, the fingers are the same size. Okay? And then as you pull back, it gets smaller and smaller. Everybody see that? Okay. A convex mirror is a wide angle mirror. You get to see many, many things by reflection. Notice that the objects that are reflected in the mirror by the mirror are smaller. The uh, position of the virtual image is actually a little bit behind the mirror to various distances. Now, watch my hand. As I get closer to the mirror, or away, the relative size changes. My reflected hand is always smaller than my real hand until I get to the mirror and touch it then at that point where I'm touching it, the image and object basically are the same size, right at the surface. A wide angle mirror. You can see a lot. Even the videographer and the camera. application where here they uh, you have to drag you got to drag this thing over to this side 
Uh, in class, I always draw from left to right, but this application wants you to, to do this to see the, uh, the uh, convex mirror. So if you do that, look at that, it's cool. You can see, look at that, same size when you touch the mirror, and you get smaller and smaller as you get farther away, and that's gonna approach the focal point. Isn't that cool? So you have all the cases. In other words, if you make this thing go farther to the left, this gets smaller and smaller. And as that goes to infinity, it goes to like the little dot at that. And then if you bring it in, it grows up, same size. So these apps are really powerful. You can really see what's going on. Far away, it's gonna be tiny. If I got really far away, it'd be at the focal point, which is this little dot here at four. And as you come in, see, get bigger and bigger like that. Very nice, so that's cool. And there's one where we got the, the photographer in there. The next one I didn't want to do, class. I didn't want to do the next one, but she's the professional. She says, no, you got to do it, you got to do it. I don't want to do this one, <laughs> all right? She made me do it, Wendy Newman, she knows. She said, that's the one. And not only is it a good art, artistic work, it actually shows the physics. That the nose that's touching the uh, mirror is the same size, and then the other parts get smaller and smaller, so the head looks funny. I first discovered this on a car where they had a, a, a mirror like that on a car, and as a little kid, I looked at it and I looked funny, and I started laughing. Nice. Uh, this one's cool. I will pass this around the class. This one has a coin. This one has a coin where you can see like a quarter, and you can't pick it up, so it's not there. It's an image. The professor at the University of Merlin would say, don't ask someone to pick it up. Have them flick it without touching the surface, and then they get distracted. They don't know what you're trying to see, and then they start doing this. Because you say, pick it up, they know you can't pick it up. Because why do you ask me to pick it up? See, once Chancellor Highsmith, I, I had, I know, I knew Chancellor Highsmith, the late Chancellor Highsmith, and I was demonstrating this on the science day. I said, Chancellor, pick up the coin. This is no joke. Chancellor Highsmith, he goes right in and gets it. I mean, he's, he, he raises money. He's a fundraiser, right? So it's really at the bottom there. But you, you will freak out when you see that. Look at that thing. That, that looks, doesn't that look like it's right there? So we pass that around the class. And, and, and you can't pick that up. Your hand goes right through it. Your finger goes right through it. See? So go pass that around and take a look at it. You might have to hold it just right. And you can see it's like, like the image is there. What it's doing is this taste here. You got the... You got here one mirror like this and the other one like this, and you have the coin there. So it hits this mirror, hits that, and then comes out like this. So basically, it's like you think it's there. So you know, like, like it'll hit here, and then like bounce there, like bounce around, and it looks like it's right there. Like there's nothing there. Like there's nothing there, see? So. Uh, class, this is nice. This is the, the convex, so you can see a lot of the cars. And it gives you a warning. Objects in the, in the mirror are closer than they appear. Be careful. Because it looks like they're tiny far away, but they're not. You might figure out where this came from. I was backing out of my garage, and like I smacked into the garage wall, and I busted it. Not smart. So be careful when you're back in the half garage that your mirror doesn't like smack into the wall. <laughs> right. I need to get the kind that fold because they they built some for guys like me that can't back out to the garage that will actually they'll fold and you won't bust them. All right. And then watch this. This is the convex mirror. If I focus on that, the images are behind the mirror, not far away, like we did in class. And then here I'm fuzzed out here with this other stuff, this regular mirror. If I focus far away on the trees, then I get fuzzed out here. I can't see the, uh, the convex. That's neat. Like, look at this. Uh, th this, is, this is the convex. Look at that. Th that's uh, Christmond. Uh, this is uh, Black Mountain area. Isn't that cool? Uh, look at that. It's like in a, in a store. That, was, that used to be a store on a Merriman. And for five years, I kept asking the students where that was. And my wife says, you realize that's no longer there. I said, oh, I guess that's why they haven't answered me the last five years. Uh, I think a Walgreen is there now or something. All right? uh, look at this, uh, where you can see around the corner at a, at a hotel. Uh, astronaut, the, the faceplate. Uh, Avi, who took my class. I say, Avi, you got convex glasses. I get down and take a picture. Look at that. He's a good sport. You know? 
So I might come after you in the quad, you know, say, oh, man, you got some cool stuff on. Can I take a picture? Yeah, neat. That convex, yeah, it's nice. Now uh, there's convex Berlin. See? That's nice. My son, Evan. Here's a student who took my class, and she had that in the blue banner. Uh, this is a bowl. Uh, beautiful. She's showing the reflection. Think of college, and you think of learning by the book. But in one area class, it's done with mirrors. This is the Physics of Light class at UNC Asheville. It's one of the most popular classes offered by the science department. Students learn how light works with other objects, and sometimes that light can play tricks on you. Check this out. Can you see the penny there? Now watch, I put my finger right through the penny. Are you watching? You see the penny? Now watch this. Students found out the penny just appeared to be floating on top of the bowls. It's really glued to the bottom of the mirrored bowl. Professor Mike Ruiz teaches a trick like this in every class to make the lessons on the board come to life. 